Hello YouTube, this is going to be not an unboxing video, surprising, but this is going to be a review of the Humerix Heckler & Koch licensed um, G36C. It's manufactured by s and but since it has Heckler & Koch licenses on it, or licenses on it, yeah said that right. Um, it has to be a Umerix because Umerix holds Heckler & Koch's licenses here in the U.S. Um, I'm just going to try and keep this pretty short, which it won't be because it's something I made. But <laughs> um, I'm going to try and keep it to be like um, a simple pro-con sort of list thing uh, with just a general overview here at first. Um, first off, I've not used this gun very much. It's only had a couple hundred rounds through it. Um, I haven't really ha had much of a chance to use it because I had heart surgery Thursday and that's when I did the unboxing video which I'm about to go in and type up the description for but it's uploaded. Um, you guys won't be able to see it till the description's in, but yeah, I able, I somehow pulled myself together enough when I got home to get that apart and get the unboxing video filmed, so it's a very quick unboxing video. There's no overview of the gun or anything in there, because I wasn't myself. Like I said, I had heart surgery just that morning, and I wasn't feeling great. And stuff, but yeah, and then I even want, they forced me to take Friday off, which I didn't do anything that day. But I still went to work Saturday and Sunday, so yeah, so I barely even touched this gun. But first off, overview butt pad on the stock is plastic, there's no rubber, there is a sling mount back here. There are some holes, like most G36s have, for the body pins when you take it apart. Um, there's a button on this side. Press it in. Put it over. There's a nice satisfying click when you put it back into place. And it is quite sturdy, like there's no wobble with it there. It's extremely sturdy. It's much sturdier once it's locked into place here than the Matrix one I reviewed. Um, it is definitely not going anywhere. Um, that being said, there's no wobble when it's extended either. Um, it's not going anywhere either. You still have to push in the button to get it to move anywhere. Um, there are visible pro-con lists, sorry. Um, as for the overview, ambidextrous fire selector switch. Looks like a normal G36. Comes with a high cap mag. Works pretty well. Uh, slight wobble. It's not like a loose wobble. It's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it doesn't like loosely. You have to move it with your hand, otherwise it won't really wobble. That much. It doesn't affect performance, it works fine. Charging handle, instead of pulling back just enough to uh, show the hop up, this actually goes back all the way. And um, rail, long single top rail, plastic. Um, the front rails, there's three of them already included on it with hex wrench screws. They get colder than the rest of the gun, which makes me think they're metal, but they're not super high-end metal. They're not steel. Probably just aluminum or something. Um, two sling mounts in the front. Uh, it kind of moves back and forth, but the screw just may need to be tightened. I haven't... I was going to do that before this review, but I forgot about it. But yeah, it moves back and forth slightly, so that may have to be tightened. Um, Orange flash hider, I couldn't find anywhere that said it had 
uh, threads on the outer barrel, so it may not. Uh, but I found on Shorty USA's review on YouTube that it looks very good with the gun if you just use a matte black spray paint, which I'm not going to do. Um, there's flip up rear sights, which are fully adjustable for wind. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's spring loaded and there's a screw on top here. You just screw it up or down. The flip action is very um, tight, I guess you could say. It doesn't like it doesn't like to uh, turn this very well, so it's not going to go anywhere. It likes it does like to stay in place, so it's not going to go anywhere when you um, are playing. What I like about this one, unlike the Matrix, if you can see that it's just a notch opening in there, and then the standard front sight. But the Matrix one has two circular rear iron sights. This one has one circular, or if you flip it down, it's just a notch, which I like that better. It's more like a pistol, I guess. Um, but it. It is fully adjustable for wind and elevation. Um, okay, pro con list. We'll start with the pros. How about that? Um, the slide or the cocking lever to pull it back. It's if you pull it out uh, slightly, it can go out to either side for you to pull it back easy. But if you pull it out slightly, it won't go back in on either side. I'm thinking it's built like that. Um, you can pull it back halfway just for the hop up and push this down, the handle down, and it'll stay open for you. Or you can just pull it back all the way. And I, there's some internal review um, videos on YouTube. I'm not doing one, but you can see the red um what the fuck is it called the red <laughs> cylinder was i can't even think of what it's called um spring loaded pretty well goes forward all the way um yeah the cylinder is red it looks nice if you pull it back all the way um it's got the three front rails and the one long top rail. Those are nice. They already come with black hex screws. Um, body's made of polymer like the real steel. Um, other pluses. No body wobble. Um, there's there is a slight tiny tiny movement in the front handguard that covers the battery battery front handguard but you can't even really notice it you're not going to notice it while you're playing or anything um uh, high cap mag works pretty well looks nice like I said very little wobble there um that works well mm. Oh, the body pins, they feel like they're metal. I believe they're metal. Um, they're all very snug, except for the battery one, which is definitely tight enough. It's not going to go anywhere while you're playing. It's much tighter than the uh, um, Matrix one. I Matrix gun I reviewed. It's much tighter than that. There are no uh, O-rings on it to hold it in place, but there is like a little metal pin. There is a little metal pin on the side of on the front side of each one that's sort of like spring loaded that keeps them in. So yeah. Um another thing I liked about this gun is the wire Unlike the Matrix, the wire doesn't wrap around up here and come back down. It just 
comes up and it's right there. Also, you can see the sorry. You can see the black and red wires are wrapped in another insulating wire that holds them together so they're not going to get knotted. That that is a great touch right there. I love that feature. Um they don't they won't get pinched that way. They're not going to they're probably not going to break on you. So that's a very good thing. It has a mini connector. Um Um, like I said, it's fully licensed by Heckler & Koch. Um, let's show you this side. Very nice touch. I like how it's licensed. It's, it makes it look a lot better. Because on the Matrix one, I showed you guys, there was, all, there was like nothing. There were like no warnings or no, there was nothing on it. This has licensed trademarks. I love that. Um, focus out. Anyway, I'm gonna, I've got some point twos I believe in here now. I'm gonna put in the stock battery that came with it. Also, the clip, the battery clip here in the front holds the battery very well. Um, like on the Matrix, the battery clip doesn't hold very well, so if you open it too quickly or in the wrong way, you could drop the battery and it would just disconnect itself. This one isn't going to do that. Um, I guess I'll move on to the con list now. Um, you really have to look into the hole up here to line up the pin to get it even in because with it just like gravity fed on it doesn't like to line up perfectly straight so you gotta sort of hold it in place and you can hear it snap once there's a battery in this front pin is not going anywhere it's very tight it's very snug not going anywhere you should have no problems at all with it also, once there's a battery in, the front handguard, no wobble at all. I guess that could be a pro. I mentioned that in the first overview of it. But once you get that battery in, there's no wobble at all. Like I said, this is the battery that came with it that... I'm not sure if you guys realize this. This will be the first time I've said it. But on eBay, I've changed it to sell this gun. Instead of the Matrix, even though I just got this one. Um... Reason is I've put in a lot of I put in my time and stuff already into the Matrix one. So and I've already put more rounds through it so it's lost more of its value. And I feel like I can lose a little less money on this one. Um Oh yeah, another pro I forgot to mention. Back here, you remove one this back side body pin. And this is held in very well. You have to use a, I use a flathead screwdriver because there's a little notch that sticks in up here. You pull this metal piece out, which includes the spring for the caulking lever. And then you have access for the quick change spring guide. So you can change the spring to spring guide in as little as it's like two, three minutes if you have to change it for like uh, field regulations or whatever. That is a great feature. It also means you can take the spring out before you take apart the gearbox. You don't have to worry about it popping apart when you're trying to put it back together or taking it apart. So none of the, you don't have to worry about breaking any of the internals. Great feature. I love that feature. Uh, however, I have not taken it apart. I have taken this back piece out to see the quick change spring guide and the back of the which the spring guide itself is metal already, which is another nice touch, which I'm sure the Matrix is plastic, but that is a great touch. Um, forgot to mention the overview, there's another sling mount here, but yeah, 
back to the con list. Top rail's plastic. It, however, it is sturdy. It doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. Um, bring this back over here. You can see the um, seams just like in the Matrix. However, the ones on the battery guard are much less noticeable. The ones on the stock, though, however, are much more noticeable on this one than on the Matrix. There are there is no seam in the top rail, so that's a good thing. So yeah, overall, the stock, the seams are more visible than the Matrix. In the front, on the handguard, less visible. <laughs> wow. I'm kind of liking this gun more and more now. <laughs> but anyway, um, polymer body doesn't feel quite as high quality as the Matrix, but the Matrix is um, $15, $20 more expensive, and it doesn't have the quick change spring guide, and the body pins don't fit as well on that one. So this one also feeds better. The magazine feeds better, not like no double feeding issues or anything like that also the stock hop up is great it works just fine it feels actually yeah but like I said the pr or cons there is a little bit of a white blemish here in the seams under here it's not really noticeable because when you have the hop up handle charging handle forward you don't really see it that much um, Another con, it may not be a con for anyone else out there, but I like to have a rubber butt pad, or shoulder pad, I mean, instead of plastic, because it slides around less, but that's really just personal preference. Um, uh, I don't really like the uh, warning thing right here, or warning right there which is engraved into the plastic not really a fan of the warning labels but they aren't white they're black and they're engraved in so they don't stand out too much other than that for the cons that's about it pros definitely outweigh the cons I love that the way the wires are in there that's amazing don't get pinched like in the matrix um, uh, the pistol grip is, sl it, you can't grip it as well as the Matrix because it's not textured, but if you hold on to it, it's not going anywhere. Oh, another pro, the selector switch. You can hear it click, semi, and a even stronger click. It feels good going into full auto, semi's a little on the weak side, but safe no click whatsoever it doesn't feel very safe at all you may need to change the part in there for the selector switch I don't think it's too expensive online um, that being said unless you bump it it's probably not going to go anywhere but you shouldn't really store or transport your guns with a battery in them or load it anyway so that shouldn't be too much of an issue but it does click going into semi-auto. It doesn't feel like it stays there super well. Full auto, it feels like it'll stay there and everything. It's probably not going to pop out while you're playing out of place while you're playing. But actually, this right side... Uh, okay. This right side firing selector is a little loose. Like it moves slightly without doing anything. Um, overall, the fire selector is probably the worst part of this gun. Yeah, it really is. The fire selector switch, worst part of the gun, but that's, I don't believe it's very expensive. It's, I don't believe you do have to take apart the gearbox to change it. I'm not totally sure on that though. Or you just may have to take the gearbox out of the gun. And 
on most G36s, it's not too hard. There's plenty of videos for that, I'm not going to go into that. But definitely the worst part of the gun right there, worst con. However, it's functional. But yeah, go keep going into the gun further. Um, it will not work with King Arms mid-cap magazines. Will not. I don't know why I lined this this high cap it came with up with one of my King Arm mid caps. That's the reason why I'm selling this gun and not keeping it over the matrix is the mid cap magazines because I was going to skirmish the gun. So I'm going to need mid caps instead of high caps. Let me just check the time. Damn, 20 minutes already? Sorry, it's going to be another long video like I said. It's, I tried to make it short, but it's not going to happen. Um, anyway, um, like I said, it doesn't, the body doesn't feel as high quality as the Matrix, however, it doesn't feel the super low quality, so it would be an amazing first gun. If you're just getting the airsoft, great first gun. Especially if you are looking forward to getting into it more because the quick change spring guide um, spring means you can take apart and put back together the gearbox quickly, easily, and really without too much worry of breaking any of the internals. Um, so it's very upgrade friendly. Um, Definitely worth the price you'd pay for it. I don't. I, oh well, I love this gun. Just gonna put that out there. The only reason I'm selling it and getting rid of getting rid of it over the Matrix, which has more problems, is because it can't use the King Arm King Arms mid caps that I bought for a G36. I'm not sure if it will take other mid caps, but it won't take the King Arms ones that I have meaning it's not very good for me. But as a first gun, amazing choice. If you're looking for a G36, don't look anywhere else. Get this gun. You won't be disappointed, trust me. <laughs> it shoots about three, about pretty much exactly 330 FPS with .2s, and pretty much exactly around 300 with .25s. Hop up, snug, not going anywhere while you're playing. It's not going to readjust itself. Um, works great with .2s and .25s. Shoots pretty straight. There's no type or barrel like the Matrix, unlike the Matrix, but it still shoots very accurately. And I am selling this gun. It's on eBay, same price as I originally had the Matrix for, but it is practically brand new. I haven't done anything to it, unlike the Matrix, which is why I'm keeping it at the same price. Um, also I'm offering the option if you purchase it from me to upgrade to a type bore inner barrel, Mad Bull. Also upgrade the, um, hop up chamber to a Pro Win branded, actual Pro Win one, not the cheap Matrix one that I put in my Matrix gun. The actual Pro Win branded blue metal hop up chamber, which is one piece, and upgrade the hop up bucking which doesn't even, I would just suggest leave it stock, but if you don't want to work on it yourself and you want to have it upgraded slightly, if all you're going to do f to this gun is upgrade it, which I would definitely suggest, if you're looking for a great upgradable gun, definitely get this. Um, a cheap, great, easy to upgrade gun, definitely get this. Um, I can put this in for you. If you go to the, e I'll put in a link to my eBay page for this, but I can put those in for an extra fee after you purchase the gun, but you'll have to message me about that and take care of pricing. Other than that, if you want it stock, it's a great gun stock. I'll just do a couple firing tests. The battery I did fully charge with a uh, smart charger, um, not the dumb charger, but I will include the dumb charger that came with it. I will include that when I sell the gun. Um, 
I did charge the battery though with, like I said, a smart charger, fully charged. And yeah, so I will also turn the hop up all the way off as well, just like when I got it. But so that's what the gun sounds like on semi auto. Okay, now full auto. So yeah, another pro. Great rate of fire, especially compared to the Matrix. That's because it doesn't have nearly as high power spring, so they didn't have to put in a purely high torque motor. So great rate of fire, great hop up, great accuracy, especially for a non-type bore barrel. Um, the included high cap works great. It can clear the entire capacity in just like one or two full wind-ups. Although it's, to me it feels like the wind-ups take a while to get or to wind up all the way. But it does clear the entire mag in just a couple wind-ups. Great gun, feels good in the hand. Um, so yeah, that was just a quick firing test. I already said the chrono, I already have a different chrono video. I'm gonna set to not private when I get back inside. But yeah, sorry I keep repeating myself, but overall, great gun. Highly recommend this to someone. I said the only con really is you can see, visibly see the seams in the back and what looks like some white glue I guess back there. Um, that and what else to say? Yeah, the selector switch is a little is a little loose, so that's not great. Um, also, it can't take the King Arms mid caps. But I'm, like I said, I'm not sure if it can take other brand of mid caps. Um, I couldn't find anywhere that said if it had threads on the outer barrel. But on Shorty USA's review, they spray painted theirs matte black for the flash hider. And it looks great. Um, I, the inner barrel is also red, just same color as the cylinder of, I can't I can't think of the right name for it I guess whatever fuck it um you can't really see it though um I I don't know I really can't tell you if the outer barrels thread or thread or not but other than that, if you're looking for a first gun, just trying to get into airsoft, this is an amazing choice. Great choice. Because it works well with .2s and works pretty well with .25s. Um, this stays open very well. Also locks into place very well. It's a lightweight gun. You can definitely bring this to a skirmish and not get tired with it. Um, Licensed by Heckler & Coke. But yeah, looking for a first gun? Right here. Get this gun. It's amazing for the price. Um, looking for a gun to upgrade and you're not... If you haven't upgraded much before in terms of airsoft, if you're looking for a first gun to upgrade or learn how to, version 3 gearbox, easy to find parts. I believe it's Tokyo Murray kit compatible, this gun is. Maybe not, yeah, maybe not be this, uh, Tokyo Maru would take a King Arms mid cap, I don't know. But you can change the Magwell out to an M4 or whatever, Magwell M14, whatever, you can find this online too. But, 
Yeah. Great gun. Looking to upgrade it. Definitely the cheapest fully licensed gun you're going to find. Probably not going to be able to find one that's easier to upgrade because of the quick change spring and spring guide. Um, for a first gun, highly recommend it. High rate of fire. Not too powerful. Probably good starting range. Great. Falls in the most uh, FPS um, restrictions for most fields for close quarters combat. Um, but yeah, 30 minutes. Wow. Same as the Matrix review. But yeah, I'll try to get this uploaded uh, October 23rd, tomorrow. And yeah, overall, final word, amazing gun. Starting off in Airsoft, amazing gun. If you're already into Airsoft and you know how to upgrade, amazing gun. Easy to upgrade, great, go for it. Easy, great, easy. Like I said, I can't stress easy because you can take the spring out without taking apart the gearbox. So you won't have any problems with it shooting apart and breaking internal pieces when you're trying to get it back together and shit. You can put it in afterwards. That's the, that's the reason why I bought this gun to begin with. But yeah. If you're looking to learn how to upgrade a gun, version 3 gearbox, easy to take apart, because it's a G36, great gun. No matter what, it's always just a great gun. <laughs> so, whether you buy it from me, buy it from Airsoft GI or another site, highly recommend it. Like I said, this is the $165, $170 one. It is uh, numerics, Heckler & Koch licensed, but it is made by S&T, which is a Chinese company. It's not made by Ares. However, S&T is a good brand. They separated from Ares, so it's, they're basically, they were, were the same company and they separated into two. So, S&T, you can trust them, for making a quality good gun. Alright, I'm going to leave it at that. Amazing gun. Amazing gun for pretty much anyone. So, yeah. Please buy this one. I'm kind of short on cash now since my summer job's about to end. Um, and I'm trying to buy an Xbox this week. Yeah, get this. I don't even have an Xbox yet. But yeah, I've <laughs> yeah, I'm buying an Xbox this week. So I might get some videos up from me playing that or something. But anyway, I can't stress this enough. It's a great gun. Um, I'd really don't